When I heard Paul McCaffrey had been let go at KNBR 680, it was shocking news to me. When I hear the words KNBR 680, the first things that spring to my mind are the voices of Murph and Mac and Tom Tolbert. Of course, my relationship and just my enjoyment of sports talk radio goes way deeper than that. Being born and raised in Sacramento, California, Sports 1140 KHDK was a huge part of my evolution and education as a sports fan. So much so that I would even go on to intern at the radio station back in the day. That was quite an experience unto itself. Another story for another time, perhaps. Even then, my sports radio listening area didn't contain itself to Northern California. As I grew up and I got to have more experiences and travel up and down the West Coast, I was introduced to all new stations, all new hosts, all new characters, all that good stuff. In fact, some of my favorite personal memories are just the road trips I would take going up and down the West Coast listening to sports talk radio. You haven't lived life until you find yourself scanning radio stations hoping to find someone local talking sports while drinking a pumpkin pie milkshake in a Newport, Oregon, Arctic Circle parking lot. Arctic Circle, criminally underrated only because it is in the most random locations across the West. From Blaine, Washington, way up in the north to Chula Vista, way down south in California, Sports Talk Radio in the West, man, it was a weird, wild, and wonderful thing that we should all just celebrate and appreciate. Some of my earliest childhood memories are actually listening to 1380 The Score in Sacramento, a radio station that has long since died. I don't even know what happened to it. Just one day, the sports talk stopped, that wasn't enough to deter my passion for sports talk. As I grew slightly older, I found myself just wanting to go to bed with the radio turned on to a sports talk radio station. This is probably why I still sing out the stingers for one-on-one -on -one sports and the Sports Fan Radio Network. Anyway, during the day, my sports talk radio options were limited to... 1140, Hot Talk 1140, and then Sports 1140, and KNBR 680. Well, that was the truth at least during the day. You never really knew what signals would be available at night. There was definitely a week in early 2002 when I got some sports station from Winnipeg, Canada. Of course, the second the sun came up, the feed transformed into pure static, but man, was I excited to be listening to the best Winnipeg sports talk had to offer. As I got older, graduated high school, and began traveling more, my love of sports talk radio, it only grew. I lived in Seattle for a hot minute in the 2000s, and man, I got super into KJR 950. When I traveled down to Southern California and heard the Petros and Money show for the first time, I was blown away by just how good those two are. I know Petros Papadakis, he's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really enjoy him, even if his work on Pros vs. Joe wasn't always the best. Perhaps the best experience, though, is just driving through Oregon. For whatever reason, the state has had this robust sports stock scene. I believe Portland still has three stations focused on sport to this day. Then I moved to the Palouse where I attended the University of Idaho and got immersed with small local sports stations. I really found myself appreciating what the on-air personalities in cities like Spokane and Tri-Cities did covering minor league hockey, high school sports and the like, but also giving these small areas a voice on the sporting scene. Up and down the West Coast, there were small stations with maybe one or two local shows that really were just part of the sporting fabric of the community it represented. These are some of my favorite stations to listen to if you just happen to be driving through the right place at the right time and manage to catch one of these. They're really just a fascinating look into the local scene from a sports standpoint at least. The one thing I noticed as I got older though is that I really enjoyed 
local shows, local hosts, people serving a community or a town or a city. This is meant as no disrespect to national hosts. There were some great national sports radio personalities out there, but there's just something I find to be so enjoying about that local sports talk experience, and you just don't get that anywhere else. Of course, that is all disappearing right before our very eyes. The cuts by KNBR are simply the latest call in an industry that does not seem to care about being local. Why pay someone to talk about local topics when you already have a national team who can carry the baton of the same four topics in any given day? Ultimately, too many sports talk radio hosts at the national level have just become caricatures of themselves. They are just a funhouse mirror version of the on-air personality they had at one point been in their careers. And a select few have just sold out entirely. I mean, you know, fair play to them, but there's really no coming back from that. With this greater emphasis on budget cuts and national host, we've lost something truly special and truly amazing, especially out here in the West Coast. Sports radio in the West is weird because it isn't just flat out miserable. You know, at the national level or even back east, there's very much the mindset of it bleeds, it leads. Everyone wants to cry or be angry about something when it comes to sports. On the West Coast, Things were always oddly positive. Maybe positive is the wrong word. It's just, there's more hope, I suppose. There's just more of a willingness to believe that hope exists. Hell, last year, I remember Damian Barling over on whatever they call ESPN Radio 1320 in Sacramento spending like an hour on the potential KZ Paula had to be a contributor for the Kings last season. It was the most misguided, hopeful nonsense you'll hear, but that is kind of the mindset you get when it comes to sports radio in the West Coast from West Coast hosts. Every Seattle Mariners season is greeted with an almost comical amount of what-if optimism. What if Ryan Roland Smith wins the Cy Young this year? Maybe the M's can sneak into the playoffs. That was never going to happen, Mariners fans. But hey, at least Roland Smith's a pretty good color commentator. At least I enjoy him. Elsewhere, you have countless local hosts trying to put a positive skin on whatever their lowly college or minor league sides are doing. There is also very much a love for the hypothetical when it comes to sports radio in the West. I mentioned this in my bizarro Golden State Warriors Dynasty video, but hosts like Damon Bruce have no issues with going down the rabbit hole of hypothetical situations. And I am all here for that because it is great radio. Monta Ellis or Stephen Curry. These are fun discussions that are so much more interesting than fire coach X or trade everyone or everything sucks. Sure, those topics still creep into daily programming on sports talk radio in the West Coast. You'll get some negativity that's bound to happen, but it just doesn't permeate every sports discussion at these radio stations. There's always a little hope that even the worst teams are just a move or two away, a draft pick away. It's so awesome. It's so enjoyable to listen to. But man, it's also really weird when you go from the very just negative, angry East Coast or national radio down to the West Coast where you have people talking about teams that bad teams that get almost no publicity saying, well, we're so close. If only we bring in Antonio Daniels to bring in our backup point guard. Sports radio in the West has also been historically wild. I guess you could say all radio in the West has been kind of wild. I mean, in Sacramento, we did do the Hold Your Wii for a Wii contest at good old 1079 the end. But I digress. The wildness, it can be seen in things like, you know, do the Kings stay in Sacramento without Carmichael Dave? Maybe, but there's no denying his efforts certainly helped that cause. Then you have guys like the former host of Blind Date, Roger Lodge, forging a pretty successful sports talk radio career down in Los Angeles. Only in LA, I suppose. Not everything is pretty, though. Mitch Levy got popped in a prostitution sting over in Seattle. 
That one really stung, at least for me personally, because I was a big fan of Mitch in the Morning and Mitch Levy's work on Sports Talk Radio, and he hasn't really been able to come back from that. Other cases include Isaac Rope from Primetime with Isaac and Souk being found to have had more than two dozen traffic and parking violations to his name when he got pulled over for a DUI. They do not call it the Wild West for nothing. Honestly, you never knew what was going to happen from breaking trades to on-air personalities having to come on to apologize after doing something really, really stupid. In their defense, though, most of these hosts who did get caught doing bad, stupid, making just bonehead mistakes did own up to this with one noticeable and absolutely ridiculous exception. Grant Napier aside, it does not get any better than sports talk radio in the West. From the 50,000 watt flamethrowers to the small locally owned radio stations that are just trying to survive in a challenging climate. This rich tapestry of talk was so wonderful in its heyday. You probably didn't like everyone who was on the air locally. That was essentially a given but you still had to respect the craft and approach of just being able to partake in local sports talk. There was something just simple and enjoyable about having something for your market, your team, what you cared about as a sports fan. Sports radio in the West, it wasn't mind-numbingly loud, it wasn't relentlessly aggressive, and it wasn't painstakingly repetitive. Even the braggarts and the douches were at least somewhat tolerable. Ironically, this is perhaps its downfall. Loud, aggressive, and repetitive is apparently what sells in the world of sports talk. This is undoubtedly bad news for us out west. Sure, you do have local content creators and you have podcasts and there are things filling the gap and doing a good job, but it's just not the same. Live sports talk radio is a connection to the world. It's a connection to the here and now. And importantly, sports talk radio, when done right, is an art form. And yet we are losing that connection and losing that art form with more local hosts being let go in exchange for cookie cutter national programs. It's a damn shame that one day in the not too distant future, people won't know the struggles of driving through the Oregon high desert, California's San Joaquin Valley, or the Washington Cascades, fumbling with the radio dial in hopes of finding a local sports radio station. Lord knows I have sat through 80% static just to get that 20% of audible sports talk from a local host. And you know what? I wouldn't trade that for the world. Sports talk radio in the West is clearly not long for this world. As much as that saddens me, as painful as I find that reality to be, it's also one I've begun to accept begrudgingly. This isn't a fight I'm going to win. It's not a fight we're going to win. That doesn't make it any less sad, and that doesn't change the fact this is certainly not for the betterment of the sports talk radio scene, of the sports content production scene. It's just the landscape is going to be so much worse off without that local West Coast sports talk. Our voices, our outlet out West, has been deemed to be, well, unnecessary, Who needs to talk about what's happening with our local teams and our local sports opinions when we can have the 35th straight day of Who's the Goat Talk on your nationally syndicated radio show? It is not a future I am looking forward to, and I know I will always appreciate the time I have got to spend listening to those local sports talk radio hosts in the West. That does it for me. I'm Cheyenne Hollis. This is the Touchback, and as always, hashtag take it out to the 25.